England arrive desperate to restart 2020 campaign as batting struggles mirror black caps. England arrive desperate to restart 2020 campaign as batting struggles mirror black caps England flew to rain soaked Wellington with fitness concerns over their captain Owen Morgan, amid a 2020 batting slump starting to mirror New Zealand's. Tuesday night's dry series cricket match at Westpac Stadium carries an extra edge after Australia cantered past England on Saturday to book their spot in the February 21st final in Auckland. In a rematch of the 2016 World T20 semi-final which England won by seven wickets in Delhi, the losing side face an uphill battle to claw their way to Eden Park for the decider. Australia, meanwhile, the Big Bash All-Stars, suddenly look the best T20 side in world cricket. Both sides face a rush build-up for what looks an evenly matched contest. New Zealand arrived in dribs and drabs on Sunday after numerous flight cancellations due to fog, which saw their scheduled practice session cancelled. England, too. Will get a solitary Monday session after crossing the Tasman following a seven-wicket defeat in Melbourne, defending just 137-7, which ended their mammoth stint in Australia. The beauty of a tri-series is we still have a chance to make the final, stand-in skipper Joseph Butler said. It will be a nice change of scene in New Zealand. We haven't showcased our ability as we can, and there are guys who are determined to come back strong. They may have to do so without Morgan, who was a late scratching at the MCG due to what was described as a groin niggle. I don't think we quite know the extent of it yet so we'll wait and find out, said Butler. In the left-handers' absence England's batting was unimpressive on a tricky MCG surface against Australia's varied and accurate attack which skittled New Zealand for 117-9 in Sydney. Power openers Jason Roy and Alex Hales departed early which saw momentum grind to a halt. Butler, one of world cricket's most feared hitters. Managed 46 off 49 balls at no five including just three fours. Doid Malan was run out brilliantly by David Warner and fellow test player James Bin struggled to generate a strike rate in Morgan's spot. Losing three early poles, I felt the best way was to then to take some balls and kick on at the end, but that never really happened, Butler said. I struggled, I was trying hard and it didn't manage to work. I was hoping to be better than a runner ball with five overs to go and then really kick on, but it never happened. You'll have to improve and look at where I went wrong. Despite losing Warner early, Australia's power pack top four of Darcy Short, Chris Lynn and Glenn Maxwell were untroubled to guide them home with 33 balls to spare. In Hobart three days earlier, England also struggled to score enough runs, posting 155-9 on the way to a five-wicket defeat. New Zealand reassemble with similar concerns to England over their middle order after three successive T20 defeats, with two new faces Mark Chapman and Tim Saif at summoned to address it. Chapman will likely bat four and save at seven in the New Zealand order, with two of the top four Super Smash run scorers injected for Tom Bruce and Tom Blundell to add punch either side of the inform Colin de Grandhomme. Showers are forecast for Monday as both sides hope to drain at the Basin Reserve, while March Day, 7 p.m. start, is predicted to be fine and clear with a maximum of 23 league.